Welcome to Ireland, home to the third largest Irish population in the world. I'm exploring Dublin, I'm going to see the Guinness Storehouse, I'm going to see Trinity College and there's a few surprises in store as well. So come with me for the ride, I'm back in my homeland. On the grounds of the beautiful Trinity College, it's here that you can find the Book of Kells. And also, if any of you have ever seen the film Educating Rita, it was filmed right here at Trinity College. There's plenty more to see, let's have a little look around. If you want to see the Book of Kells and inside Trinity College itself, make sure you book in advance as it's extremely popular. And I couldn't get in as a walk-in on the day that I visited. Taking a walk past Christchurch Cathedral in Dublin, it's a great place to stop for a moment and admire the beautiful medieval architecture and find Somerset stonework on display. Surely this is what we all come to Dublin for, to visit the Guinness storehouse. It's that time of the day. I don't even care, it's not even midday. I'm going in, I'm getting that Guinness. The Guinness Storehouse is, without a doubt, the most popular tourist attraction in Dublin. Tickets are more expensive when you buy on the day, but if you pay in advance you can get adult tickets from €28. Euros. This is recommended as it can get super busy on the day and you might not get in as a walk-in. A link to buy tickets has been included in the description below. On your way around the storehouse, you'll find out some facts about the production of Guinness. You're also taken into a tasting room where you'll be able to sample a quarter-sized pint of a Guinness. Don't worry, inflation hasn't changed the size of the sample. You'll be able to get your full-size okay. pint later so on in the tour. first step is going to be a big deep breath in, okay? <laughs> Two seconds, a lot of okay? Because okay. you're all Guinness tasting okay. experts. One more thing before you go. Okay, bye. The glasses. They are adorable, I know. <laughs> Conveniently pocket sized, I know. You'll also be able to see some of the old advertisements and promotions that Guinness have been so famous for over the past few decades. Some of these are interactive, so selfies at the ready. Create your own Guinness poster with my travel on scouts there. <laughs> Best place to get your pint in the Guinness Storehouse. Got to be all the way at the top, the gravity bar. That's where I'm heading now. Yeah. Check out the views all around Dublin Centre from this vantage point. Can't beat it. enjoys my Guinness a little bit too much. So it was now time to stop for a bite to eat. There's a huge Latin American population in Dublin. We stopped off in a Venezuelan cafe that serves churros. Stopped off for churros. Typical Irish Irish on George Street Arcade. It's a little market, there's plenty of street food, plenty of boutiques here as well. Great place to explore. Coming into Dublin Castle, it's been here for hundreds of years, from the 13th century I believe. So, absolutely incredible amount of history. Let's explore this place. Tickets to enter the castle are eight euros online, and again, a link to purchase tickets has been provided in the description below. The castle itself is a self-guided tour that lasts about 40 minutes, but it is one of the most interesting things to visit whilst in Dublin. You'll be blown away by the beautiful architecture on display. Chosen for its position as the highest point in Dublin, this building was originally the seat of the British government administration in Ireland. 
In December 1921, the castle was ceremonially handed over to the Irish Free State. Now, this castle holds the inauguration of each president of Ireland, along with other state banquets and events. And check out this guy, who has an early prototype of AirPods. The unofficial anthem of Dublin is Molly Malone, and on Suffolk Street you can find a statue in homage of Dublin's most famous lady. And according to the Irish Times, many tourists throw up her bosom area in search of good luck. I wander through St Stephen's Green, and it was this park which was actually pivotal in the Easter Rising in 1916. That, of course, six years later, led on to Ireland declaring independence from Britain and becoming the country that it is today. Now St Stephen's Green is a haven for people to relax from the hustle and the bustle of the city centre and it's just a nice place to chill. over to the Natural History Museum here in Dublin. It's time to see some dinos, baby. Admission is free as well, so a good place to take the kids. It's not going to beat the budget. Come on, let's take a little look around. Okay, so this doesn't give Jurassic Park a run for its money. There are no dinos on display here, but there are quite a few fossils and stuffed animals that hail from islands to be seen. Now I'll be honest, this place wasn't really my cup of tea, and I did find quite a lot of it quite freaky. But for a little wonder free of charge, who am I to argue against that? Welcome to the River Liffey, and this bridge is actually quite famous because this is actually wider than the River Liffey itself. River Liffey is the lifeblood of Dublin, it's a great place just to walk along and explore. O'Connell Street's biggest landmark, the Spire, love it or hate it, you can't miss it when you're in Dublin. The spire, at 120 metres tall, was chosen to replace Nelson's Pillar, which had been bombed in 1966, but also to commemorate the new millennium. Now, no trip to Dublin would be complete without a trip to Temple Bar. Yes, it's a tourist trap, but this place is also vibrant and alive. I'll leave you with a taste of what you can enjoy on a trip to this world-famous pub. I've been Mike the Travelling Scouser, and you have been awesome. Ciao for now.